Master George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things video short. God isn't a monster in the Old Testament. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring that bell, and donate. If you love the work we're doing, like, subscribe, ring that bell, hit the button right here, I think it's right here, and donate. Your tax-deductible gift keeps Higher Things, an organization which isn't just about a sleeping dog and a pastor, no, an organization about passing the faith to the next generation keeps us a rolling. So often people think that um, the God in the Old Testament is this grumpy God who's like, you know, woke up on the wrong side of the bed, decided he was going to kill uh, 500,000 um, Philistines before breakfast, um, is uh, 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 icky, full of law. God in the God of the Old Testament is the law of God. God in the New Testament is a gospel God. Um, and that's just not true. Marcion, 200s, I think, is the first her heretic with this uh, teaching. What Marcion did was he pulled out all the books that he didn't like the God. He said, there are two different gods in the scriptures. And so he removed all the gods, all the books that had the judgmental God in them, and left all the gods that had um, all the, all the uh, gospel, all the, uh, the books that had good things that he liked in it ended up with a lot less books. And it wasn't just Old and New Testament for him. But a lot of people will say this sentence, and maybe you've even said this sentence, um, uh, well, that was God in the Old Testament. God in the New Testament is so much nicer. Whoever holds this treat has the power of Thor. Anyway. Uh... This week's gospel, introit, the, the reminiscare from Psalm 25, it shatters that. Old Testament. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindnesses, for they are from old. Let not your enemies, let not my enemies triumph over me. Um, redeem Israel, O God, out of all her troubles. Just think this through. Just think this through. Just for a second. Just, just dwell upon it. Chew on it. Gospel it. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies, for they are of old. Zakar, remember. God, you're the God that never forgets. So when I need, when I think that you're a God that isn't loving and kind and merciful, um, I need you to remember your mercies and your um. <laughs> the word is chesed, which, like, when you say it, I need to, like, wipe off the the uh, the, the camera. Um, chesed is your covenant faithfulness. And this, this mercy and this covenant faithfulness is from old. And so we ask God to remember his mercies because we need him to. You see, we're all like this. Did you see what he did to my elbow? We're all like that. We're all, all sinners in need of crumbs which fall from their master's table. We all are desperately in need for God to be merciful and for him to keep his promises because we're not merciful and we don't keep our promises because we sin. And although we repent and though we put on sackcloth and ashes, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden we deserve forgiveness. In fact, Repentance, true repentance, knows that we don't deserve, um, that deserve to be forgiven, and it's and it's it's part of our sinfulness. When we apologize to somebody, when they don't forgive us, we're suddenly like put off because after all, we did the work of apologizing. It is only by grace alone that God has mercy on us. It is only by the 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 mercy of God. Excuse me, how's it going there? Did you want something? It's only by the mercy of God that he remembers our sins no more. God, we need you to remember your mercy and forget our sins. Because if you kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be ashamed. Do not remember the sins of my youth. According to your mercy, remember me for your goodness sake. Don't remember what I did when I was younger. Don't remember my sins. Don't remember the things that I'm horrified by. And this is in the Old Testament. 
For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my sin. Forgive my sin because it is great. Be the God who is so merciful that you are merciful even to me. And for those of you who think and have said before that the, the God in the Old Testament is different from the God in the New Testament, know this. This is Psalm 25. This is God in the Old Testament. You see, the God in the Old Testament is only harsh because we sin. The God in the Old Testament is only um, rough for our good. He conquers the Philistines because uh, he, he wants to protect God's people. He drives the children, the, he drives Pharaoh and his chariots into the sea to save his people. Everything he does, from lawing you to punishing you to disciplining you, is all in order to gospel and save you. God is not arbitrarily doing bad things to you. He is merciful. He is kind. He is faithful to his promise. I sent my son to save you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people. And let me just tell you the good that I'm going to do because of Jesus, not because of you. And so let's lose that thought that God is this monster in the Old Testament and think of him as a father who loves us. Our God is the biggest God on the playground. He's the biggest God on the playground in the Old Testament, and he's the biggest God on the playground in the New Testament. And he's harsh with us, and he disciplines us because he loves us. And he, and he, and he repents us in order to save us. And so when he laws us, that's a good thing. When he calls us out of our sins, that is a good thing. When he tells us to leave our idols behind, to set aside our despising of his word, to correct our bad language, to... Um, uh, remember the Sabbath day and not to despise the preaching and teaching of God's word. When he tells us to honor mom and dad, when he tells us to not hate or murder, when he tells us not to lust, when he tells us not to steal, when he tells us not to covet, uh, to, to slander and to tell lies about our neighbor, when he tells us not to covet anything, he's doing that to, to call us out of our sin and death in order that he might be Calvary and Easter God who saves. He's that God, not a monster, but a God who's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Think about it. And rejoice in the God of the Old Testament who loves you as a father loves his children. And then rejoice in the God in the New Testament who shows you that love in the giving up of his son. He's a good God and a faithful God, and he will save you. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short.